Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be about whether or not software engineering is still a good career option in 2022. So I typically make videos about cybersecurity on this channel, but I do get many questions and comments from you guys asking about software engineering versus cybersecurity. And before I got into cybersecurity, I was also in the software engineering space. And I'll also link Luca's software engineering channel in the description below as well. Okay, so the short answer to this question, at least in my opinion, is a resounding yes. When you think of tech careers, the pillar job that you think of is probably a software engineer. And even while it's probably one of the most talked about jobs already in tech, I don't think that actually makes it overrated because, because of the abundance of software engineering jobs out there. Which leads me to the first topic in this video, and that is the fact that software engineering has many different career options. You could be doing back-end, front-end, full-stack, mobile development with iOS or Android. You could be a game developer using Unity or whatever the most popular coding languages out there are for gaming. Definitely an area I'm not as familiar with. But all this to say that there's not just one single dimensional job called software engineering. If you're in software engineering, you could be pivoting into many different spaces. And that is the reason why a lot of software engineers have many different careers. They could start out as a front end developer and then move to full stack and then move to iOS development. And then maybe they want to get into game development. So because of that, the shelf life, which sounds like a really bad word, but basically the extent of your software engineering career isn't stuck to one specific language or one specific platform. You don't have to code in the same language your entire career if you don't want to. When someone tells me that they've been a software engineer for 20 years, I know 100% that they haven't been coding in one language only for their entire career of 20 years. It's typically going to be a few stints here and a few stints there, all the while being able to learn different skills, pick up different coding languages, and actually work on the projects that they're interested in just because of the flexibility that software engineering gives you. Because once you kind of learn that first one or two languages and have those in your back pocket, it's going to be a lot easier for you to pick up the next few languages. And if you want to go into something and, and you have a curiosity in Android development, then if you already knew Java, then you can pick up Android a little bit easier. And while not every coding language is the same or can do exactly the same things, they typically have a lot of parallels that will allow you to more quickly pick up the language when you already know one of them. And that leads me to my next point, which is which is growth potential. So I've definitely made videos on a similar topic in cybersecurity. And in terms of cybersecurity, there typically is a plateau once you get to, once you become a senior cybersecurity professional, otherwise you have to go into management or some kind of role that is managing people essentially or you're likely going to have to switch jobs or switch companies to be able to get a boost in salary or a boost in promotions or some kind of role or title promotion but for software engineering this can be a little bit different i do believe that the growth potential for software engineers is is a lot higher than cybersecurity professionals just because of the fact that there are staff software engineers and of course this is going to depend on your company i'm specifically talking from a tech company point of view but a typical tech company there are different levels for software engineering and the software engineering ladder is going to be the most highly sought after highly compensated and just overall the most important for any tech or software company and there's basically a scale or a ladder you can climb for the lower level up, up to the higher levels and staff software engineers and tech leads are kind of sitting at the pinnacle of the top of those software engineering ladders and I don't believe that there is an equivalent to that in cybersecurity. I'm sure there are staff cybersecurity engineering roles, but they're probably not going to be in every company that hires cybersecurity professionals. But when it comes to software engineering, if you're at least in a software company or in a big tech company or any company that or any company that builds software and values their engineers, there's very likely going to be a staff software engineering role. And typically in those roles, you don't have to become a tech lead or a team lead if you don't want to. You probably will still be mentoring the more junior developers on your team but you're typically still going to be contributing code and that's the big difference between cybersecurity professionals when they reach their senior peak and software engineering professionals when they reach their peaks because they don't have to become managers if they don't want to even if the business wants them to if they prefer staying as an individual contributor and spending more of their time coding rather than managing people or or reviewing performance goals then that is what they want to do and companies are going to try really hard to keep that software engineering talent and even then you're probably still going to get huge bonuses huge rsus or stock options huge bonus percentages even as you continue further down your career 
at that same level of a staff software engineer which also brings me right into my next point about high salaries so typical software engineering average salaries that you'll see on websites like Glassdoor, payscale salary.com everything like that it's probably going to be around the 90 to a hundred thousand dollar range of course this is going to vary by different companies i know people who are graduating college with with a salary of around sixty thousand dollars and i also knew people who are graduating out of college in software engineering with six figures and up and what's even more crazy about these high salaries is, is how much they actually grow which which i completely did not have a grasp on when i was in college they're probably going to be senior and staff software engineers at big tech companies like fan companies or manga companies who are making high six figures even low seven figures depending on the projects they're on what teams they're on their bonus percentage how much stock they have vested and i know i keep comparing software engineers to cybersecurity but that's just because i know the main audience of my channel is in cybersecurity so just to put it into perspective for you guys the most i've seen a cybersecurity professional make is a little bit under two hundred thousand dollars and that's for you know someone very senior for 15 to 20 plus years of experience and comparing that to what i've also seen in software engineering with someone with four or five years of experience who also makes that same amount of money not even including their stock options or bonuses or anything else and i'm not saying that you should choose software engineering just for the money just because they pay so much money because if you're only doing it for the money you're gonna get burned out you're gonna hate your job you're gonna hate your life and it's just not gonna be a good time but i'm saying if you're already someone who's interested in coding maybe choosing between cybersecurity and software engineering and maybe you like both of them but the key thing here is that you enjoy coding because i know people who don't like coding and prefer to go into cyber security roles without coding but if you like coding and you're interested in both then i don't think it would hurt to consider a software engineering role a security engineering role or even just a role in cyber security that has some scripting some coding to get your feet wet and understand exactly what you want out of your career before saying okay i definitely want to be a software engineer but regardless of this i do think that i do think that software engineers in the long run whatever you want to call it make a very significant amount of money especially if you're working at a fan company or one of the big tech companies that, are, that have it very well compensated software engineers. All right, next thing on this list is benefits and being able to work remotely or flexibly. So you've probably already heard of the perks that come with a lot of big tech companies. Again, when it comes to free chef cooked food in their kitchens, free snacks and drinks everywhere, lots of paid time off, really good paternity and maternity leave, work from home office budgets, and honestly, everything that goes into it. It's definitely not a lie that tech companies pay a lot of money for their employees employees to be comfortable and that also is kind of a way to keep them at that company so it definitely can be seen as a double-edged sword especially if you're someone who may be interested in doing something else like working in a different sector or doing a startup or working on passion projects instead those little benefits and perks are probably going to keep you around not to mention healthcare the fact that many big tech companies fully pay for your health insurance premiums as well as provide you fully funded different health accounts and and payment accounts as well as high 401k matching all these benefits really are there to keep you at that company but again if you're someone who's not looking to leave anyway then these perks are awesome because it really is just creature comforts and conveniences that they're able to provide you outside of your already high compensation as well as the ability to work remotely or flexibly a lot of tech companies have mental health days reset days basically just random days off they're more likely to allow you to work flexible hours that actually fit within your life and your schedule if you have to pick up your kids at a certain time or if you have or if you only prefer to work early in the morning or late at night i know many software engineers who log in at 10 a.m or 11 a.m because they're not morning people and their teams and managers are completely okay with that and then there's another thing about remote jobs, which a lot of tech roles specifically do have remote roles available. And in terms of the tech roles that really need good talent, which I believe software engineering, cybersecurity, data science, AI machine learning, cloud, those four are probably the ones that have a lot of in-demand jobs. And they're probably also the ones that are going to be more okay with you working remotely. And the next thing is the fact that you're always learning and you have and you have a creative outlet through your code right on the job. So this one can also be seen as a negative just because I can see one of the major downsides that I personally don't like as much about software engineering is the coding interviews. So if any of you guys have ever prepared for a software engineering interview, you probably looked at LeetCode and HackerRank. These are the most popular ones. There are websites out there that kind of prepare you 
for these tech coding style questions where they ask you a problem and you talk it through, you ask questions, clarifying questions, and you basically code it out on paper or on a Word doc that they provide you. Talk it through with your interviewer, tell them why you use this data structure over another data structure, the runtime complexity, and everything that goes into that. That is probably the process of coding interviews that I dislike the most. But then again, there's some people who love doing lead code and love that lead code grind. And I'm not one of those people. But if you're someone who wants to get a software engineering job at a big tech company, then you 99% of the time have to go through lead code grinding. Unless you're super smart, which of course there are people out there like that, and it may just come naturally to you. So the continuous learning part can definitely be a good thing, but up to a point before it gets just overwhelming and can lead to anxiety about work, always needing to keep up with the latest trends, always needing to learn new things and, and keep up with the newest languages. Even when you're tired, burned out, maybe you have a lot of personal things that you're dealing with and you don't have time to invest into your learning or development as much as when you did in your early career, which is very true for many people who may be in their late 20s or early 30s and starting families or focusing on their personal things outside of work. So I do think that the always learning, always always growing part of things can definitely be a pro and a con, depending on how you see it and where you are in your life. And the last thing to discuss, of course, is job security and the software engineering being a high demand job. So even in the last two years, where the economy has been very turbulent, there's been so many talks of recessions and layoffs and everything like that, there are definitely tech companies out there who are laying off their staff, who are getting rid of teams, who are making their team sizes much smaller and cutting back on manpower. And even while all of this is going on, I do still think that out of all the jobs that you would have, besides maybe nursing and the medical field, jobs in tech still have relatively high job security compared to other sectors that may be in, that may be in travel, marketing, PR, everything outside of technology. Personally, I think that cybersecurity has better job security than software engineering. But again, it depends on the teams that you're on, what projects you're focusing on, the applications that you're supporting, and just how high visibility it is, and how much they need you on the team. But again, the skills of a software engineer are always going to, are always going to be needed anywhere. And even during this economic downturn, there are still many, many companies looking to hire for software engineers because of the high job demand. And even if you get laid off or let go of at your current company, you can probably pretty easily find a new job at a different company within a month or two. And that is really just pretty normal compared to compared to other sectors like PR or marketing where, where the focus isn't on your hard skills like coding, but it's more so on your soft skills like communication and writing and talking to people and presentations. And that stuff is a lot harder to measure during an interview and it might be more competitive in terms of in terms of the different candidates that you're competing with. But when you're a software engineer, most teams need multiple software engineers rather than rather than one marketing lead or marketing manager and it's much easier to find a job or look for your next job as a software engineer compared to other fields outside of technology okay so i'm sure i'm a little bit biased in this video just because as someone who works in tech i know many software engineers and and all of them just happen to have very good careers ahead of them and those career aspects and job security in general is definitely something to aspire to especially if you're someone who is currently considering a role in software engineering Engineering. Of course, I can also make a video on the cons or the downsides of working as a software engineer, which by the way, again, Luca has a software engineering YouTube channel. He'll probably be posting around once a week. So hopefully you guys can support him on the early beginnings of his YouTube journey. And thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and turn on post notifications. I post videos every Wednesdays and Sundays at 12 p.m. And hopefully I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.